This is the Six Man Show, an Orlando Magic podcast, with your hosts, Luke Silvia and Jonathan Osborne, covering all things Magic basketball. By fans, for fans. Go Magic! What's going on, Orlando Magic fans? You guys are back with the Six Man Show. Today is March 21st, 2024. Jonathan Osborne here, as always, joined by my co-host, Luke Sylvia. Luke, the Orlando Magic have clinched the postseason. How are we doing? I, I'm amazing now that we've officially, we're, we know that we're at least going to be in the play-in. Now, at this point, we've got higher aspirations, but it's just nice to know that it's cemented. So for the first time since 2020, we will get a very meaningful basketball game that has implications for the the success the further success of the season so i'm excited for it you obviously just get done stomping out the hornets and i man i i couldn't feel better about that on that aspect I, i just i'm ready for playoff basketball now i'm also playing the stretch of bad teams was it cool to win that many games absolutely but you just play so many bad teams that you're just like, I can't wait to play a game where like we, we have a measuring stick in this. It's awesome to know that we can beat the bad teams. That is a sign of growth. We've talked about that time and time again. But now you go into Thursday, as you guys are listening to this, probably you got the Pelicans tonight. And now you're, you're getting your tune-ups for postseason basketball. And that's what I'm most excited for now. Yeah. Going in and taking a look at the schedule, see how many more games. So we're going to have at least one, two, three more games at home against teams that are below 500. The Magic have not lost at home this season to a team that is below 500, at least, at least Kia, right? Like Atlanta, the new, the, the Mexico City right. game that we all have talked about doesn't count, but at Amway and now Kia, the Magic have not lost to a team below 500 this year. So at home against bad teams, Magic are, are very much taking care of business. Now they're 41 and 28. And at home. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. It's Just everywhere. at home in general. And you've only got five more road games out of the remaining games on your schedule. Yeah, you're 24 and, and nine at home. You're 24 and eight at Kia. Yeah, everything tells us the Magic are in for a strong end to the year. And we're just going to trust the stats and hope that happens. Yeah, the Magic are are tracking right now. 13 games remaining. Yes, they're going to be playing, you know, better quality opponents. But it it looks like you're tracking for like at least 46, 47, 48 wins somewhere in there. 50 wins, probably not likely, but not totally out of the question either. So you get to you know 43 wins, and now that becomes the most games the magic have won in a single season in 13 years luke yeah. so what this team is doing is not you know insignificant by any means and we're going to talk about the the hornets game in a bit but one thing that we haven't really done on the show this season up to this point now we're in the 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 point where we're scoreboard watching like we're we're not recording this game until almost quarter to 10 wednesday night and part of that was because we were watching to see what was going to happen in the final minutes in this miami cleveland game because either one of those results, like Cleveland wins or Miami wins, Miami ended up winning. But either one of those results, you know, would have uh, would have helped us. Either you gain on the Cavaliers like we did, or you put a little bit more space in between you and the Miami Heat, which also would have been nice. That's kind of where I am. Yeah, I- I'm happy where we're at. Right, we're going to go through the state of the Magic and, and really talk about the standings in a second. But where I am right now, Luke, is I'm not getting greedy. Like the, no. the teams ahead of us, if they lose, that's great. Mm-hmm. If we can close the gap there, but in a game like Cleveland and Miami, a team ahead of us and a team like right behind us, I wanted Cleveland to pull it out to put a little bit more space between us and Miami. That's where I'm at. I want the teams that are right below us to to lose. Well, exactly. Uh, that's where I'm at as well. Producer Kevin has a little bit different of a take. He's he said it on the post game live show, so I'm not outing his mindset by any means. He's feeling greedy. And and he wants to gain, and I get it. Like I, I being very competitive myself, and you the same way. I understand the perspective. Like let's at this point, we've come this far. We didn't come this far to come this far. Type of thinking. Let's get up in the standings. But as far as just like 
laying it out there. The Magic right now are just two and a half games at, in front of the play-in. That is not a lot, especially when you've got the games that the Magic have coming up, right? All it takes is you to have a tough stretch of games and a team that's in the play-in spot right now, like the Pacers, having an easy stretch, like an easy week, and you have a hard week, and all of a sudden you're in the play-in. So for me, I just want those play-in teams to stay there. Y'all can stay play-in teams. Would it be awesome to be able to handpick and like, this is who I want in the playoffs? Sure. But at this point, I just want to make sure that we're in the playoffs. Not the play-in. I want to be in the playoffs. I want a seven-game series guaranteed. And that's not going to be helping with the Cavs dropping games to the Heat when you would hope that the Cavs would be able to do that. They don't have Donovan Mitchell, obviously. It's a big caveat. But I I was definitely rooting for, for Cleveland so that Miami would just step back a bit further. But unfortunately, not the case. You and I are of the same mind. But it is fun to see some discourse in our group chat with Kevin of, you're crazy for thinking that. And then Kevin's like, you're crazy. You know, I'm, I just want to get higher in the standings. I understand both viewpoints, but I just, I, I don't want to play risky when and when in your end type play basketball. We'll save that for March Madness. Yeah. And to your point, I wouldn't mind a, a shorter series than, than seven games. If the magic are on the correct mm-hmm. end of it, there you know, you the magic, Beat the the Knicks or the Heat in in five six games. I, <laughs> yeah, I won't well, I won't be mad okay at with, won't, okay won't be mad that. at that at all. Yeah. Okay, a couple of items to touch on before we get to the state of the Magic. So coming up, our group night, um, which we're now like nine days away. As you all are listening to this, that's going to be uh, March thirtieth when the Magic take on the Memphis Grizzlies. If you were part of the first round of tickets that went on sale a couple of weeks ago and. Uh, part of that first 60, then you're going to be able to join us on the floor earlier that day uh, to play some pickup basketball. Uh, we're still waiting to see when details are going to go out around that. Um, once we hear on that, you know, emails are probably going to be going out pretty shortly. So just keep an eye on your email, but we'll be sure to you know, share to social media when those emails are going out as well. But uh, just rule of thumb, just keep your eye on your email so that you can um, get all the details on you know what you can bring, when to be there, all that sort of stuff. So, But if you weren't part of that first 60, if you still want to come to that game with us, you can. So uh, Magic have uh, given us some more uh, tickets there, which you can purchase at fivo-enterprise.com slash event slash sixth man six, which is S I X T H. M A N and then the number six. So again, that's Fivo enterprise.com slash event slash sixth man six discounted tickets, about a hundred dollars a piece right now, which for lower bowl tickets is a heck of a deal. And you get to hang out with us and you get to hang out and cheer with a ton of other magic fans. And before the game, roughly from about four 30 to, to six o'clock, we're all going to head over to jam hot chicken and you can just hang out. If you want, you can get something to eat for yourself. If you would like, uh, but we're going to head, head over there and sort of hang out before the game. And then six o'clock, head over to, to Kia and, and get to our seats and get ready to, to continue to cheer on our Orlando Magic. The next episode of The Six Fan Show is actually tonight, as you're listening to this, March 21st, Thursday. Magic take on the Pelicans tonight at the Kia Center starting at 7 o'clock. After the game, our buddy Ben will be outside of Kia with the lights and the camera. You guys are bringing the action uh, for The Six Fan Show. So on your way out of Kia, be sure to stop by uh, he'll be you know right out front near the the blue uh, chain link fences that are over there, as the Magic uh, are sometime this year breaking ground on that uh, entertainment complex. So, but Ben will be out there, so be sure that you guys uh, stop by and, and say what's up and, and show some love and and give your takes and just share how excited you guys are about this team and about the playoff run that's coming up. One last announcement here, uh, arguably the the biggest piece of, of the announcements for for today. Uh, we have a new team member. We are adding a, a lot of you that are on Magic Twitter might already be familiar with him and with his work. Uh, but our guy, Brandon Jones, who runs the Orlando Analytics account, his handle is at or ORL underscore analytics. And it's exactly what it sounds like. He does like deep dives into, uh, you know, advanced metrics and, and, and data surrounding the Orlando Magic to, uh, 
just provide evidence for for different you know talking points around the magic and he creates visuals a lot of times uh, that go along with those he just does a fantastic job uh if you don't follow him already go ahead and do so if you don't have a twitter account it's probably worth it to create one to go you know, one follow us on there uh but also to to follow brandon uh, he just does such a great job and we're really excited he, he's going to help us just sort of uh, enhance the content that we're already bringing and my favorite part, help us push magic agendas. Like, hey, Brandon, we feel like Jalen Suggs is one of the best perimeter defenders in the league. What do you have that helps support that? And he'll whip up some stuff, and we'll be able to say, hey, we think Jalen Suggs is really good, and here are some numbers that, uh, that uh, you know, some good old confirmation bias, as they say, Luke. But, yeah, just really excited to have Brandon part of the team. And just to give you guys examples, too, like, He's got a lot of, he does a lot of like Twitter threads where he just gives like extensive information, details, and he's really good about presenting fact um, and not so much just like the the opinion, right? So he just lays it out there for you and lets you kind of form your opinion based off that. He His top one is pen tweet right now, just to give you guys an example, um, is like based off the quote of people always talking about how Orlando is better when Palo isn't playing. Um, he goes on to list a, a myriad of things, but ultimately coming down to like opponents playing much stronger lineups when Palo is on to account for Palo really and and match his skill versus when he's off, um, which is why like a lot of the bench unit and why these things do deserve context. The bench unit has killer numbers and difference point differential and things like that when you look at the stats, but you know you take a closer look and you realize it's because the bench is just dominating other bench units. And uh, and Palo's having to play those stronger lineups. So Brandon provides a lot of really good context um, and and backs up everything there with with all the stats. So he's a great follow, like Jonathan said. Happy to have him be part of the team. The summary of that is the Magic are not better uh, without Palo. For anybody that that was worried about that, uh, that is certainly not the case. Right. Okay, let's jump both feet into the state of the Magic here. This week, the Magic are 1-0 so far, just one game on Tuesday. Absolutely dismantled the Charlotte Hornets, which we'll talk about later. The Magic now sit fifth in the Eastern Conference with a record of 41-28. 13 and a half games back of Boston, three and a half games back of Milwaukee. That's probably going to change in the next few minutes here. Actually, Milwaukee is playing Boston tonight, and they're only down six with 3.06 to go. So by the time you all wake up tomorrow, uh, those numbers will probably be a little bit different. Boston will either be 14 games up, or Milwaukee will be four games up or three games up, depending on how uh, that result goes. Two games back of Cleveland after their loss to Miami tonight. We're a half game back of New York. Two and a half games up on Philadelphia, three games up on Indiana, three and a half games up on Miami, seven games up on Chicago, ten and a half games up on Atlanta. On the season, the Magic are 23rd in the NBA in offensive rating with a rating of 112.9. They are fourth in the NBA in defensive rating with a rating of 110.9. They are 12th in net rating with a net rating of 2. Since the All-Star break, the Magic are 11 and 3. They're 15th in offensive rating. First in defensive rating and fifth in net rating. Luke, we don't know everything, right? But whenever there's like a talking point that we put an emphasis on and we see that kind of play out, it always feels good as when you're wrong doing what we do, people are are so quick to let you know. They almost never come back and be like, hey, remember that thing you said like three weeks ago? You guys were right. So when we have the opportunity to, you know, you might be able to hear that, pat ourselves on the back just a little bit. We will do that. Luke, we talked coming out of the All-Star break how the Magic could potentially be one of the best teams in the NBA you know, in terms of defense over the course of the last like you know 27 games, I think it was, coming out of the All-Star break. And the Magic, since the All-Star break, have been the number one team in the NBA in defensive rating. Now, yes, there's a lot of context that goes along with that. The fact that they've been playing a lot of the worst teams in the league. I have a coworker of mine who seemingly every night Text me and says, how are you guys playing another G League team tonight? <laughs> and look, you just play the team that is in front of you. You play the teams that are on your schedule. But to the Magic's credit, they have been taking advantage of that. And they have been playing stellar defense. And it's been leading to wins. So uh, good for the Magic. Looking at the injury report, it's clean. Nobody's on the injury report heading into tomorrow's game against the New Orleans Pelicans. We want to keep it that way. And Luke, now I want to talk a little bit about uh, opponent schedules 
and their their strengths of schedule because again now we're at the point of the year where we are every night we're going to be scoreboard watching and, and standings watching and, and and see how things are shifting because it, it's it seems like almost on a minute by minute basis the the standings in the Eastern Conference are are changing right now so I want to go through and, and first talk about opponents you know strength of schedules and then we can take a look at the teams that they're actually playing like Friday night for example. If you're a Magic fan, your eyes should be just glued to League Pass uh, or to ESPN and the GameCast. Keep up with what is going on because there's a lot going on uh, Friday night um, that's relevant to the Magic and, and their standings in the Eastern Conference. So first of all, let's go through uh, our uh, not all the opponents, but the, the teams that are really um, relevant to the Magic. I'm talking about Miami, Indiana, Cleveland, Philadelphia, New York, and Milwaukee. We're not catching the Celtics. Sorry to, to to break it to anybody. Who clinched the playoffs tonight, by the way? Or Good for recently. them. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. First team to I think do it. it might be mathematically impossible for us, it, or maybe like one more game, it'll be mathematically impossible for us to to catch the Boston Celtics. And then you're probably safe, you know, when when we're talking about Chicago and we're talking about Atlanta. So again, Milwaukee, Cleveland, New York, Philadelphia, Indiana, Miami. Miami's remaining strength of schedule is 22nd. So they have one of the easier uh, remaining strength of schedules around the league. Indiana is there at 20th. Cleveland is there at 18th. Philadelphia is 16th. New York is 15th. The Magic are 12th. So the Heat, Pacers, Cavaliers, 76ers, and Knicks all have, on paper, easier schedules than the Magic the rest of the way here. And that I may have changed uh, tonight after some of these games have ended. Miami but. now has the third easiest. Oh, that's that's fantastic. So they went <laughs> yeah. from 22nd to, what, 27th, 28th? 28th, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they played the Cavs, so. Whatever. So Cleveland, on the other hand, uh, there's probably changed a, a little bit 21st. as well, if I'm guessing. So, yeah, so they went from 18th to 21st. Uh, Philadelphia sitting there at 16th, New, New York 15th, Orlando 12th, and then Milwaukee 4th. So Milwaukee is is pretty much the long shot, like in terms of us being able to to catch someone. But the fact that you play them twice in the final three games and they have one of the most difficult schedules uh, in the league the rest of the way here, maybe they fall to third and and maybe those last couple of games are, are really important to to both teams. Maybe you can catch them. I don't I don't really know, Luke, but um yeah. We're at the point of the season where we've sort of played our easy stretch. We played the most brutal stretch of the season, and now with the conclusion of the game Tuesday night against Charlotte, we're basically through the easiest part of our schedule as well. And now the Magic just have to take care of business. Like, yes, we're looking around the league. We're watching scoreboards. It doesn't seem like we get much help. Like every time we look at a, a result, whatever way we want it to go or need it to go, it ends up going the other way. So what do you do with that? You just win. You, you win the, the, the games of the rest of the way. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Magic schedule over these last 14 games, and then we'll talk about, or last 13 games now, and then we'll talk about uh, some of these other teams' schedules. So, Luke, we know tonight, Thursday, Magic have the Pelicans, right? You're still in the middle of this big homestand, but the schedule doesn't get any easier from here on out. Then you've got Sacramento, you've got Golden State, then you've got the Clippers. All of those teams are, are squarely in the, the postseason hunt right now. You get a, a little bit of a break. You have the Memphis Grizzlies on the 30th, but you play the Clippers the night before, so that game against the Grizzlies is going to be the second night of a back-to-back. Then you have a day off. You've got Portland at home, and then you take the road for a quick two-game road trip at New Orleans, at Charlotte. You come back home for one game. You have the Bulls Sunday, April 7th, and then you have the last road trip of the year at Houston, at Milwaukee, at Philadelphia. And then you return home for the what will probably be fan appreciation night, the last home game of the season, the last game of the regular season for the Magic. April 14th at 1 o'clock, you take on the Milwaukee Bucks. Now, if we look at the schedule, Memphis, Portland, Charlotte, Chicago, maybe Houston. Houston's going to be tough. They've been you know playing relatively well this season. It is a road game. They're going to want to get you back for opening night when the, the Magic completely destroyed them. Uh, but at least probably like four of those games, you should be able to circle as wins, which would put you at 45 wins at that point, which again, going back to October, all of us would have taken that. But over the course of the last 13 games here, Luke, if you can find a way to go 
seven and six or eight and five, I think that is wildly successful and I would take that. Yeah, I mean what seven seven, eight wins, that's you're putting us at like forty eight, forty nine wins ultimately is what that would be. It is rough looking at it and saying the toughest schedule, like there's more tough opponents and more games against the tough opponents than the weaker when you've been having the stretch we've been having. But those are the games I'm I'm living for coming down the stretch here are those games against the more notable teams, the teams that are going to challenge you. Are you going to clean up your turnovers? We've talked about it. We don't think that magically gets solved, especially near the end of the season here. But just some type of semblance of taking care of the basketball better than you have would be great. And who better to do it against and sharpen up a little bit than against these playoff teams? It might get to the point where like you're more battle tested going into the playoffs and you're not maybe going into it coming off of just a bunch of super easy games. We'll see how it pans out, but yeah, you're you're coming to a point now where every game is going to count that much. So we'll we'll take the easy games, but those big games are going to be huge. So let's talk now about uh some of these opponents, you know, remaining schedules. So Friday, like I mentioned, is going to be super interesting. So that night, the Heat play, the Sixers play, the Pacers play, and the Cavs play. The Knicks and Bucks do not. The Heat play the Pelicans at home, which is going to be the Pelicans' second night of a back-to-back because they have us Thursday and then the, the Heat on Friday in Miami. The Sixers will be in L.A. playing the Lakers. The Pacers will be in Golden State playing the Warriors, and the Cavs will be in Minnesota taking on the Timberwolves. Now the Cavs for the next week, at least are going to be without Donovan Mitchell. He had like a nasal fracture and is going to be reevaluated in a week. They just lost to Miami tonight. Timberwolves are, are better than the heat. I would say significantly better than the heat. Um, and, and, you know, they've been, you know, putting it together recently, even without Carl Anthony towns. So when you look at, at that Friday night slate, like almost all of the teams that we need to lose that are playing, could lose. Pelicans are going to be a tough out for the Heat, even though it's second out of a back-to-back. You feel like the Sixers should lose to the Lakers in LA. Pacers should lose to the Warriors in Golden State. And the Cavs should lose to the Timberwolves in Minnesota. So that would be a big help. Well, let's look at the Heat schedule. So, that, so not just Friday night. So their remaining opponents are the Pelicans, the Cavs, the Warriors, the Blazers, the Wizards. You know They'll probably get a couple of wins there. The Knicks, the 76ers at the Rockets, at the Pacers, at the Hawks, and then the Mavericks, and they have two games against the Raptors at home to end the year. So sure, the Heat have a easier schedule than the Magic, but especially the way that the Heat have been playing as of late, we go to the standings and I take a look. They're five and five in their last ten games, right? So they're they're playing 500, 500 basketball lately. The, the the heat could drop a, a number of those games like i even though they have an easier schedule if they had let's see how many is this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve so they have 13 as well they are not necessarily going to have a better record than the magic over the course of the the last 13 games here and they're going to need to have a better record by three games so that you know they can tie and, and have the the same record, and now they they have the tiebreaker, Luke. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, when it comes down to it, it's like do you, do you trust the Magic more against those fifty fifty teams than Miami when they're playing those fifty fifty matchups? And by that, I mean you're playing against playoff teams where it's like, oh, we're we're capable. Is it likely? I don't know. It's kind of a toss up, right? Like these games against the Pelicans on Thursday. Are you more confident that the Magic can? can win those type of games versus Miami playing those type of games. And the answer right now is that I believe that the magic can handle business more than I believe Miami. I'm, I'm, I am burning the memories of the Knicks game and the Pacers game, the last two meaningful games we played. And I am moving forward that this team is going to be motivated and that they are going to be tuned up from playing all these bad teams that they're going to be able to handle business and that we're going to get the team that we've been seeing the past few, you know, since the all-star break defensively. That's what I'm going to choose to believe. I believe that team is better 
than the Miami team that's on the floor right now. So in these in these games against those those 50-50 games, like I said, I'm trusting that the Magic will take care of business over Miami. When we sat down, when, when we were coming out of the All-Star break and we were talking about you know what the Magic could do in the standings, what the Magic could do in the, the Eastern Conference playoff picture, and we talked about like the Magic could be better than the Heat, and I was I was pretty confident about that. It didn't have so much to do with like the head to head matchups because you know we we lost the season series this year. This is what I was talking about is like the Magic are, are going to win games here, and you know they had been better than the Heat on you know the season up to that point, and this is this is the the Miami Heat that you know. We 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 they are who we thought they were. Like I have never thought the Heat were all that, even though they made you know their run to the finals last year. Just didn't buy it. I'm glad that they pretty much brought back the same core and they continue to invest in that core and convince themselves that it's going to win them a title because it, it's not going to. Uh, but yeah, for me, it's like tune up games. You know, you're you're familiar with tune up games. You know, with uh, with college football, like you put a couple of cupcakes on your schedule at the beginning of the year. You know, beat the crap out of them, get your confidence up so that like when you know conference play and all that kind of stuff starts, you know, you're in a good rhythm. There could be a bit of that with the magic, like over the course of the last several weeks, they've just been beating up on all these bad teams and they're really, really confident. But then we saw them play the Knicks and the Pacers and they got the crap kicked out of them. So is it like lulling them into like a false sense of confidence? I'm going to just sort of err on the side of that Knicks game and Pacers game were like the best thing to happen to the magic. To realize, like, hey, even though we're winning these games, like, we're we're not all that. Like, we're not totally there yet. Um, and hopefully, they've taken you know this you know last week or so, uh, you know, since we we can have since those games, and we're gonna see a different, you know, determined and focused Magic team Thursday night. Thursday is gonna mean a lot to me. I know it's just one game. You never want to get too high or too low after one game. But if the Magic just come out and get annihilated. It's going to be pretty deflating for me personally. No one else is obligated to feel this way. I'm just talking about what it'll do to my psyche. If the Magic come out and lay an egg and just you know get blown out, I'm going to be pretty deflated, and I'll probably come away from that game with you know the the beginnings of the the feeling that we had uh, after that Knicks game and Pacers game is like, hey, maybe this team just isn't ready for like the big matchups, and that that would just sort of be further evidence to me. If they come out and they compete and they play really well, even if they lose, I'll be much more confident Like moving forward. Like, okay, those were outliers. Let's just completely forget about those, like you said, Luke. And if they have a really good showing against the Pelicans and the Kings and the Warriors and the Clippers coming up, and if you're able to like split those and even the losses are fairly competitive, I'm going to be feeling really confident going into the last nine games of the year. You, they have got to to also prove it that they are ready for these big games because as of now, where I stand is I don't know that they're ready for meaningful big games, um, citing those those two more recent games, but also citing the fact that you're 15 and 22 against over 500 teams this year. There's stuff. There's plenty of stuff that suggests that this team is just shocking. Shockingly, they're young, right? They're inexperienced. As time goes on, they will improve against the teams that are that are the the the, the true playoff teams and Eastern Conference contenders. But they're inconsistent because they're young and they're still getting their footing. It is okay for this team to not be ready for big games. I didn't even expect to have this conversation this year. Are the Magic ready for the next step? I just wanted them to make the playoffs. I want I wanted them to make the play in. So I would think it's unfair for me to be like, "Oh, they need to be ready for the big games. They have to be." Cuz they don't have to be. They've taken the step that we asked them to take, and the next year can be where we start saying, "Okay, we need growth in big games. Would it be great to string together a lot of big wins over this final stretch? 100%. Am I expecting it? I don't know that I'm expecting it. I'm open to, to being surprised maybe. But, but at the end of the day, this is a young team that is 15 and 22 against above 500 teams. And they're going to have some stinkers. We've seen them. But there's going to be more. 
whether it's now and the playoffs or both. We're going to see it. But ultimately, they just need repetition. They need reps against these really good teams, and they need to know what that playoff environment feels like. That's all I'm along for the ride for. If you steal a game or two in the playoffs, I'll be ecstatic, honestly, truly. But down the stretch here, I would love nothing more than to be proven wrong about these big games and see you take care of business over your next few games that are tough. This is going to be the part where like the greedy side of my brain comes out. You and I fat like rewind, go back to October. Like we were just mm-hmm. like, just make the plan. Make the plan, the season will be a success. We're there. We could lose every game the rest of the way. We would still at least be in the nine ten game. All right. Now that we're in the play, <laughs> now that we're there, I want more. I want more than that now because the way that they've played and and you know what their record suggests right now and the position that they put themselves in, they would have to like they they would have to lose basically every game the rest of the way to end up in that nine ten game. And right now you are three games with 13 you're three games ahead of the play in with 13 games to go like Miami would have to put some crazy like you know 10 and 3 9 and 4 and the magic would have to go 6 and 7 you know over the course of the last 13 games for for something like that to happen at this point so for me where i'm at is like we're almost to the house money like october i would have said we're in the house money go 7 and 6 like that's i think that's realistic that would i believe mathematically guarantee that you're at least the the 6 seed or i'm sorry no okay no you ha- you would have to go 8 and 5 because trying to do the math here we have to be at least 6 you're two and a half games ahead of philadelphia my math's off somewhere i'm i'm confident about this you got to be somewhere between 7 and 6 8 and 5 to guarantee that you're not going to be in the play, and Luke's going to try to do the the math uh, right now because I'm I'm really not my, not my strong suit. But get me to the six seed, right? Like one, once we clinch that, like if there's four or five games left, and it's like okay, the 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 lowest the Magic can finish is sixth. At that point, I'll be completely fine. If there's three games left of the regular season, and you lose all three of those, and you get swept in the playoffs, I'll be okay. Now, to your point, Luke, like it's okay if this team isn't ready for big games. You're absolutely 100% correct. And, and sort of framing in that way, like, oh, this team isn't ready for big games, that has such a negative connotation that goes along with it. But it, it's like, if, if you just look at it for what it is, they're one of the youngest teams in the league. They had almost zero national expectations coming into this season. They've outperformed everybody's expectations, even like the loftiest Magic fans' expectations. The Magic are going to exceed those uh, at least by a little bit. So you get to the playoffs, like you guarantee that you're going to get a playoff series. The experience for this team that they're going to go through over the next you know, 13 plus games, you know, whatever the playoff series is, however long that is, these games are so invaluable at this point for these guys. I'm not going to complain as long as I'll, I'll complain if, like, when we get to the plan, if we're in the plan, like, I can't believe we're in the plan. I can't believe, you know, it's a winner go home, blah, 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 blah. But, like, if you're in the plan and you win that 7 8 game at home, I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. At least we're in the playoffs and then I'll be fine. Mm-hmm. But if you were to, like, end up in the plan and lose, I would be super disappointed. But, like, the, the stakes of these next 13 games and what they're going to mean to, like, the majority of the teams that you're going to play down the stretch here. I just think that is so valuable for this team. And I was talking to Carmen about this today. This season has been so much fun. Like coming off of that big win against Charlotte last night and you had a tweet about like, hey, live in the moment, appreciate this moment while we're in it, right? But next season, there are going to be actual legitimate expectations. Next year is not going to be all vibes and happy and oh my gosh, we're so happy to be here. Next year is going to be actual expectations. And I'm guessing for you and myself and, and Kevin and like the other diehards, a lot of stress is going to come along with next season. So I just want to enjoy the last 13 games, the playoffs, all that kind of stuff. Just stay out of the plan and I'm going to be really, really happy with this team. To circle back to what you were saying earlier about what Please has don't happened. tell me it's more than eight, it's, eight and five. So here's the, the, the simple part of this is that 
The Pacers have 12 games left, and they're in the seventh spot right now. Technically speaking, if they were to win out by the, the grace of God, they would have 51 wins at that point. The Magic have 41 right now, so the Magic would have to go like 10 and 3 to tie the record of the Pacers. So really what, what is maybe more more beneficial is to look at like the Hawks who are 10th right now. They have 14 games remaining. If they win all 14, they have 44 wins on the season. The magic are just three wins away from 44. So the 10 spot, I, we can pretty much like you've said earlier, you feel like the Hawks and the bulls are far enough behind. I think that's a fair assumption. Realistically, it feels like worst case, you could be looking at the eighth spot going in and, and obviously then that would indicate you're in the, you're doing the play and stuff. But, um, but yeah, so that, that's what you're looking at because you know, you've got to look at if these teams went out all the way and what you have to do and if it's even possible, but yeah, right now the Pacers, yeah, they, they technically still have a chance to overtake you. Obviously, even if you go seven wins, right? That's 48. They technically could win out. Not likely, but yeah, you, you feel pretty good at this point that you're going to be the six seed or better. And I think everything backs that up. Okay. I know we started this conversation to go through like some opponent schedule. So I'm going to do that pretty quickly. I think we've done a good job of, of laying out, you know, the magic circumstances here. Looking at the Sixers, they're at the Lakers, at the Clippers, at the Kings, home for the Clippers, at the Cavs. And then it starts to lighten up a little bit at the Raptors, then home for the Thunder, at the Heat, at the Grizzlies, at the Spurs, home for the Pistons, home for the Magic, and then home for the Nets. The the Sixers pretty quickly here over the course of their next five or six games might find themselves like in the play-in. Like that, that's a real possibility for them. The Pacers, who again are right now two and a half games back of, of the Magic, they're at the Warriors starting Friday at the Lakers, at the Clippers, home for the Bulls, home for the Lakers, home for the Nets, at the Nets, home for the Thunder, home for the Heat, at the Raptors, at the Cavs, home for the Hawks. Pacers, again, another team that, I, well, I guess right now they're in the plan, but they could find themselves, you know, probably in the, the eighth spot. I don't think uh, the Bulls will make up enough ground uh, for the Pacers to fall to nine, but uh, these teams have, quote-unquote, easier schedules than us, but nothing about these schedules seems easy. Like, sure, there are some games in there that you would probably favor them to win in, but by no means are, are some of these guarantees, except maybe if we're talking about the Grizzlies, the Spurs, and the Pistons for the 76ers. The Knicks are home for the Nets, home for the Pistons, at the Raptors, at the Spurs, home for the Thunder, at the Heat, home for the Kings, at the Bulls. That's a back to back there. At the Bucks, at the Bulls, at the Celtics. Home for the Nets, home for the Bulls. The Bucks, Luke, are home for the Thunder, home for the Lakers, at the Pelicans, at the Hawks, at the Wizards, home for the Grizzlies. That's an away home back to back. Home for the Raptors, home for the Knicks, home for the Celtics, home for the Magic. That's a back to back for the Bucks. So two of those last three games for the Magic are going to come against the Bucks. The first matchup of that is going to come off of a, a back-to-back against the Celtics, which you know bodes well for us. Then they're at the Thunder and then at the Magic to end the year. And last but not least, the Cavs. They're at the Timberwolves, at the Heat, home for the Hornets, at the Hornets, home for the Sixers, at the Nuggets, at the Jazz, at the Suns, at the Lakers, at the Clippers. What a stretch. Home for the Grizzlies, home for the Pacers, home for the Hornets. Going through and reading all of those, like I don't feel like anybody really has an advantage. Sure, yeah. like the strength of schedule, mm-hmm. it, you know, uh, statistically might be a little bit easier, but each team's got some tough games in there. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. At the end of the day, when you've got this small amount of games left, you're all gonna have some easy games, and you're all gonna have some really tough games. And at that point, you're really splitting hairs. So win your games. The Magic control their destiny. Just win. Give yourselves a good chance to win. Put yourself in the right spots. And you're going to find yourself soon talking about how we're going to be the six seed or better. And it's a lock. We're close. If you had to bet, 
if somebody was like, you, here's a hundred dollars and you have to put this hundred dollars on where you think the magic are most likely to end up in the Eastern conference standings, Mm -hmm. where would you say today? It is tough not to say five. That means I'm not bring on the Knicks, baby. And and listen, <laughs> Cle- Cleveland being this is what I'm talking about too. As far as how tight this race is, really, when you just think about having a bad stretch of games versus a team in your area having a good stretch of games and things going well for them, the Cavs are without Donovan Mitchell for at least a week. They said at re-eval- least a week, a reevaluation in a week. That does not mean he's coming back in a week. And as it a result, could mean. it could, it could, but who knows, right? Ultimately, they're going to be focused on getting him healthy for the playoffs. That's goal number one. They're not going to rush him back. If there was ever a time for a team not to rush a player back, it is right before the playoffs start. You don't want him to re-aggravate anything. So if they're at a spot where they're like, you know what? We're completely safe of any play-in shenanigans. And Donovan Mitchell could benefit from some games off. I would not be shocked if he is off and hey, most of the season. If you're Cleveland and you're sitting there and you're looking at, do we want the three six matchup if Joel Embiid comes back if it's Philadelphia, right. or do we want the four five matchup with the Orlando Magic? Yeah, I I would understand the thinking there because if Joel Embiid is healthy, 76ers are probably a top two or three seed in the Eastern Conference. Yeah. That being said, I like mm-hmm. us matching up against Cleveland better than I like us matching up against the Knicks. Both with Mitchell Robinson. Uh, probably returning pretty shortly for the Knicks. Yeah, as soon as like their next couple games will be back, it looks like. So, yeah, I would rather play the Cavs. Still not super favorable for me just because they do protect the paint well. Um, but it, it, back to your question, the five seed is where I would put my, all 100. If I even had yeah. the chance to distribute it in terms of confidence on where we've had, I feel pretty confident that we will be the fifth seed. That's where I'm at as well. Yep. That's where I'm at. Now, let's take a quick break to give a very special shout out to our patrons. Uh, You know, we love you guys. You guys are literally the folks that help uh, support the show and allow us to do everything that we do. So, um, your support does not go unnoticed or unappreciated. If you're not one of our patrons and you'd like to see what it's all about, you want to get some more information, you can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show where we have different levels of tiers. Like we have a $2 tier where, Hey, if you just want to help support the show, give us a few dollars a month. You can do that. We have additional tiers with additional benefits that you can check out again, patreon.com slash the six man show. Whenever we have brand new patrons, we make sure to give them a very special shout out and thank you for uh, joining the community and thanking them for their support. And then we shout out our Hall of Fame and Elite Tier patrons each and every episode. So I am going to go ahead and start by saying a big thank you to our friends over at the Court Cousins Podcast. If you haven't checked them out already, you can check them out on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. Uh, Drew Gooden, who again, you can also check out on YouTube. That guy's pretty big over there as a matter of fact. Our guy, Armin, Carson Tulo, Ellis, Jonathan Borges, Normal, Magic Player History, Gabe Gaines, Wiffle, Michael Martin, Jamel Miller, Michael Salapong, Donkey Punch Dave, Palo and Frontens' Warmth, who went with the annual tier this time around. Really, really appreciate you, uh, Palo and Frontens' Warmth. Personally, wish you would change your name. I know that's going to be counterproductive. Now you're going to want to change it even less. But uh, but yeah, there's that. Pierre A, Dylan Holden, Mr. Mikey, Eduardo Sanchez, Danimal, Dodo15, Bobby Skinner, Goaty93, Teddy Sylvia. Shout out to Luke's Mama, Eric Lopez, Fuchsia, Bill Fulton, Emin Lagone, Jose Esquilin, Cannibal, uh, I'm sorry, Kayla Pete, Cannibalism, Ty, Mr. TV, ESPN really sucks, Gear95, Shred, Junior Bruce, Half Rican, Shahan177, Bobby the Dawn, Himlo, Ben Himro, RM Prop 221, Ray Pastrana, Magic Kid 714, Mysterious Mosley, Victor Cologne, Irish Magic Mike, Austin Lampy, Random Hustle, Only Franz, Maria, Keith Walls, Fritz, Currency Kev, Brub Sal, Case and Green, Santi Leon, Kane Eckler, The Distract, Ahmad Timsa, Chansu, Tom Gadsden, Dead Air, Richard Tuttle, Jeremiah Quintero, Magic Wired, Debo 1980, Magic Matt, Michael Thompson, Mama Richmond, Next Snappa, and J.R. Ponce. A big thank you to all of our patrons. Again, you can find us at patreon.com slash the six man show. Luke, talk to me about some Nashville and LA inspired hot chicken. 
There you go. Jonathan's already started off the uh, the first part there of the read for you guys. Jam Hot Chicken is one of our proud partners. Uh, we do our Jam Hot Chicken Jam of the Week. As you guys, if you guys have listened to any of our Monday episodes, very well know by now that we have that segment every sun, every Monday for those Jam Hot Chicken Jam of the Weeks. Had some fun ones lately. But Jam Hot Chicken is located at 400 West New England Avenue, Suite 13 in Hannibal Square. There in beautiful Winter Park. You guys can go follow them on all social media platforms at Jam Hot Chicken. You can go to their website, jamhotchickenfl.com, look at their menu, order ahead, all sorts of good stuff on that website. Uh, man, go check them out. Let them know we sent you. And uh, Jam Hot Chicken, the best, the best chicken sandwich around. I want to give a, a quick shout out because they are getting ready to do mm-hmm. an event with Lazy Moon Pizza yeah, coming so up great. on March 29th. Uh, so that will be located at Lazy Moon off of Mills, uh, 1011 East Colonial Drive in Orlando. That's going to be March 29th from 5 p.m. until they're sold out. Lazy Moon is open late. And they're going to have, uh, it's called the If You Know You Know Slice, which is it's $14, but I would pay $28 for this. It's the Jam Hot Chickens, the box which is what I almost always get when I go to Jam Hot Chicken, on a Lazy Moon pizza slice. Are you freaking kidding me, guys? Hot dip infused, whipped ricotta, fries, mild heat chicken, Vinny slaw, pickles, and comeback sauce on a piece of freaking pizza. You might hear me having to swallow a couple of times. That's my saliva. I'm literally almost drooling reading that right now, and I am so jealous that we will not be able to make that, folks. But uh, yeah, make sure that if you're in the area, like that is appointment culinary experience right there. Andrew, Andrew, the owner of Jam Hot Chicken, posted it when I think that they were like making their doing their trial runs of that pizza. I messaged him so fast. I was <laughs> me like, too, "Please tell me this is a new menu item." And he's like, "Man, it's a one time thing. You know, for this one event doesn't mean they won't partner again." But he said, this is for right now. It's a, it's a one night event. We're doing it um, till we're sold out. And I was like, I am devastated because the next day we will be in Orlando already for the Memphis game and that, you know, whole on court experience thing. If it wasn't the day before and would require me going to Orlando twice in a row, I would heavily consider it. You guys need to go. What time you said it started at like four five. Or five at five. I if you are in I would the be area, there at three thirty. I would be there early because it says till as long basically as long as supplies last and it's gonna go so fast. It doesn't matter how late Lazy Moon is open. People are going to be lining up at the doors because they know how good jam hot chicken is. And if you could put any of their products on a slice of pizza <laughs> I don't even know, need to know anything about Lazy Moon pizza to know that it's gonna be incredible. So Go check it out and uh, let them know we sent you if you guys end up going to that event because good call by Jonathan promoting that because I saw it earlier and totally forgot, but I would be there in a heartbeat. In, in the future, I may have to call Andrew and be like, bro, what if I stop at Lazy Moon Pizza on my way to you? Can you do a little, do a little something? Because that's like one just of those things that you just have pizza. to experience. You know, yeah. it's like, it's like Shaq's Jersey retirement night. I would probably more likely want to be at this. Oh, yeah. Then, because like, I'll never mind. I'm not going to say what I was going to say. Um, I'm just going to say it. There's oh, nothing boy. at the Jersey retirement that I could put in my mouth. Okay. I'll just, I'll just say that. Okay. Yeah. This is, well, this is different than that. Okay. Wow. So what an ad read for jam hot chicken, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's talk about this Hornets game at the same, there, at the same exact time. There's a lot to talk about and then there's nothing to talk about Yeah. because the magic just came out and obliterated the Charlotte Hornets on Tuesday night. I'm going to go to the the play-by-play here, Luke. So at the end of the first quarter, Magic are up 27 to 17. It's like, okay, sort of business as usual, nothing crazy, but like pretty expeditiously, Luke. Mm-hmm. The Magic are up by 24 with seven minutes to go in that second quarter. And then a, a few minutes later here, they're up 61 to 26. And this is the play of the game. If you've been on social media, you've already seen it a hundred times before. This is where the game ended for me. At this point, 
it's like, get these guys out of here. They don't have a chance tonight. This game is over. Going to the three minute one three minute one second mark left in the second quarter, the Magic are up twenty. I'm sorry, they're up twenty six to sixty one, or sixty one to twenty six, whatever way you want to format that. You'd be my guest. Miles Bridges drives to his right hand. Jalen Suggs is just all over him like a pit bull. Steals the ball, going the other way. They've got Alexei Pokashevsky and Brandon Miller, and then it's a Paolo Bancaro, Franz Varner, Jalen Suggs three on two. Jalen's running down the left side of the lane, passes it back to Paolo Bancaro. Poku and Brandon Miller both step up to stop Paolo Bancaro at the free throw line. You see Jalen Suggs retreating to the corner. Paolo Bancaro throws it behind his back. Jalen Suggs catches it in stride, hits the, the, the step back, pulls up for three. As soon as he lets it go, turns around to the crowd, turns his back as it's going through the net. Now the Magic are up 64 to 26. They're up 28 with 2.53 to go in the first half. Jalen Suggs is walking down the sidelines. He's dapping up Magic fans, Luke. And I did something at halftime of this game that I never in a million years thought I would have the audacity to do. The Magic are up 67 to 32 only because Michich hits a three as the, the clock expires at the first half or the Hornets wouldn't have even scored 30 points in the first half at all. But at that time, I said... I'm going to go ahead and record the post-game video. I came in here to my office, and I said, I don't know the particulars the rest of the way here, but I know the Magic went a lot to a little. This game is completely over. The Magic are on fire, and the Magic were on fire. They end up winning this game 112-92. to Second half, the Magic just really couldn't care less. They knew the game was over. Credit to Charlotte. They fought back a little bit, You know, got it to 20, but this was just like complete and utter domination from the Magic, and not even really by Paolo Bancaro and Franz Wagner. Those guys were great, but Jalen Suggs with 16 points, six rebounds, four, I'm sorry, four rebounds, six assists, three steals, two blocks. Cole Anthony in 21 minutes has 21 points, nine of 12 from the floor, added six rebounds, three assists, a steal, a block. This was the Cole Anthony game for me. This is the best Cole Anthony that we have seen in months. Like probably since November when he was doing it pretty consistently. He might have had like one or two games statistically better than this since that point. But for me, this is like if we get this Cole Anthony, you're not gonna he's not gonna shoot seventy five percent from the floor every game. But if we're getting the Cole Anthony who is capable of knocking down the shots that he was Tuesday night, that is what could flip a series for the magic against almost anybody. So this was just such a fun game crazy crazy butt kicking no other way to put it one of the most fun games of the year like Jalen hits that three and usually I'm pretty good about trying to be quiet because the kids are sleeping I'm jumping up around my living room screaming it's over it's over (laughs) just like yeah this game was awesome the magic just dominated the Hornets and yeah you feel good coming off of this one but now the schedule gets tough again if you told us before the game the magic there's a half where the magic get outscored 60 to 45 i'd say wow either that game was really close or or we lost but it didn't matter because the magic were just putting the shellacking on them in the first half and as you said that second half they could not care less which selfishly i was hoping that they would just keep the defense on them the entire second half the hornets couldn't get anything to fall just so the uh the the magic could hold them to the hot the lowest total that anyone's been held to this season, which at this point would be seventy three I believe, which was the Knicks. Shout out to the Knicks, and um, and that's what I was hoping for. So unfortunate that they scored ninety two even, but you hold them under under a hundred. You don't really do much in the second half. You, guys like Paolo and Franz play basically twenty five minutes. That starting group all plays roughly that amount. Gary Harris gets 17 minutes and everybody else gets some run. Right? You even got some some Caleb Houston run, some Chuma run. Admiral Schofield hits a, I believe, a corner three in this one. So you got a little bit of everything in this game and Cole Anthony needs these games like a fish needs water. Like he just needs to see the three ball go in. He, I think it was um, 
post shoot around uh maybe it was yesterday morning before the game or the day before that where Cole Anthony was like I just need my shot to once my three balls going in then we're back he was like but right now it's not and they they feel good it's just a matter of time Cole over the last few games this game and then the first game against Toronto did pretty well as far as shooting the basketball from beyond the arc so uh, I'm hoping that this is him just getting back into rhythm. And you put this out there on Twitter, but you said, if we get this Cole Anthony, we can advance past the first round. And it's, I mean, it's true. It's, if you can get him to just hold his own defensively, which he has been doing for the most part this year, just putting pure effort and hustle into that side of the ball, despite being the smaller defender and teams hunting for the switch against him. If he can give you that production offensively, unfortunately, you're not playing Charlotte every night, but if your three ball can just be on and you can give us games, if it's even a possibility for you, give, you to give us a, a four for six from three game in a in a pivotal game, whether that's the playoffs or coming down the stretch here for seeding, that's huge. That's That's one of the X factors and one of the determining factors for this team going to the postseason and perhaps the biggest question mark. Yeah, like basically anybody but Boston. I think like if, if Cole Anthony is going to give you, you know, 46, 47 percent from the field and 37, 38 percent from the three point line, like I would I would bet that to flip a series against pretty much anybody like Milwaukee, Cleveland, conversely because, to what he was shooting. Right. Specifically. It, exactly. Yeah. And him in that type of role, drawing the amount of attention that he, that he would with those type of splits would open up everything else for that bench lineup. Like it mm-hmm. would take a lot of like right now, Joe Ingles is having to do everything like yeah. in terms of like creating offense for that second unit, mm-hmm. whether it's, you know, knocking down threes uh, or running like the pick and roll with Mo Wagner mm-hmm. and Cole Anthony, like hurting teams that way. And them just shading a little bit more in his direction, I think would just open up everything again for that second unit. And as great as they've been playing all year long, like it would be that like much better with Cole like really cooking because he he's a he's like a microwave guy he knocks down a couple of shots and now you, you know when he t- he's touching the ball um that he's, he's either pulling up or, or trying to get to the rim so yeah Cole Anthony needs these games badly the magic need Cole Anthony to have these games badly and you know what else is lethal is when if we know that we can trust Jonathan Isaac to hit those, you talk about Joe Ingles and Mo Wagner on the court together, running the pick and roll, and then Cole Anthony basically just waiting for the defense to collapse, make the wrong you know rotation, and him to be open for a three. Then, it, it, but then let's say you've got Jonathan Isaac on the court as well. That's and I, that's something I do want to look at too is like how many possessions those guys have played together between Cole. Uh, J.I. and then Gar- uh, not Gary, Joe Ingles and Mo Wagner, which I'm almost there, but um, I'm guessing that that four man, I know that the Magic's best two man lineup, which shout out to the uh, Athletic NBA show, which I was on last week. Those guys, there was a trivia question of what is the Magic's best two man lineup this year, and it's Cole Anthony and Jonathan Isaac. So well, that four man lineup's got to be pretty good, I would, I would uh, assume. Yeah. So this year, that the, those four on together have played 550 possessions. They are a plus 13.4. Net rating. Yeah. So that is, at that point, you, you think about it. If Cole's got it going consistently, J.I. now, legitimately out of nowhere, can is reliable from the, that corner three spot, which is hilarious. A lot of his... What are you gonna is say? it out of nowhere? Because he's been doing it like for the majority of the season now. Well, I feel like we've fi- maybe not out of nowhere, but now we're finally saying, okay, we can buy it. Because listen, I've seen that man airball like since, and, and clank it. Since December 1st, 33 games, 46% from behind the arc. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy, actually. He's just so, the only the only magic player shooting better in that time, Chet Howard. Right. <laughs> Small well, sample size, Small unfortunately. Samples. Well, yeah, and that's what it comes down to is volume too. Like if, if JI is giving you close to two, two and a half, two, two and a half attempts a game, 
that four man lineup is is legitimately deadly. Listen, listen to to, to some of these guys over the since uh, December first. Ji forty six percent, Joe Ingles forty five percent, Anthony Black forty three percent, Jalen Suggs forty one percent, Wendell forty point nine percent. Wendell, dude, they're shooting three, the two. lights out. Yeah, and it's it needs to happen and at some point whether that's next season or whatever they they have got to just increase volume and say okay we are finally in a groove shooting the three ball let's trust it and increase volume continue to create opportunities now that you are shooting respectable amounts volume should naturally go up because there are defenders that are you know respecting you um but also like you have the confidence to take those shots so at that four man lineup can just continue to get run and these guys are just knocking down shots that's a problem and that's the reason this bench unit was got the reputation they got so early on which was like you know that magic bench they kill dudes like they they are just uh, nick's film school andrew claudio always brings it up like your bench just blitzes other people of their team's benches so and, and that's the reputation this team got so if you can just continue to knock down shots if you're cole anthony Hit the open one if you're open, Jonathan Isaac, or if you're feeling crazy, those contested ones we saw. I, I mean, that that bench unit is going to be uber important come postseason. Okay, Luke, last uh, thing that I want to say again is like just Thursday night is super important for the Magic. I know it's just one game, but for me, who I, I admittedly have a little bit of a tendency to overreact from time to time off of one game, I usually am, am pretty good about reining it back in and, and taking a look at the big picture. But in the moment, if if the Magic come out and they, they don't play well and they're not competitive in this game, in the moment, to me, it's going to feel like the sky is falling. And then I'll quickly be like, okay, it's, it's just one game. It's not that bad. But when you look at the schedule and three of the last... You know, Three of the last three teams that well, three of the last three, duh. The last three teams that you've played that are above five hundred, if you just get waxed by all three of those teams, it's not a good sign. You know, we've talked about how this season is about you know, learning and and how you know valuable all of this experience is, and that's great. But I still want them to play well. You know, like yeah. losing four in the in the in the, the playoffs, fine, as long as you're not getting blown out in you know at least two or three of those games. Like you have one blowout and you get swept fine. The other three are competitive. I guess that's okay. Would hate to see them get blown out in four consecutive games. That would really suck. But Thursday is just really, really important. I know these guys time and time again, before big games this year, they have acknowledged, Hey, this is a big game. This means a lot to us. And in quite a few of those, they have not delivered. I know they understand the stakes going into this game and, and what it means. And yeah, if I'm not mistaken, this game's on NBA TV. So it's a air quotes, national televised game, but you're going to have a few more eyes on you than, than you normally would. So it's important to, to come out and, and get a W. And that's really all that I have to say. It's crazy that we're already heading into the last you know week and a half here in March and 13 games to go until the postseason. I, I really, really cannot wait. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get string together some more, some more wins here. We'll see. And hey, if the Magic pick up their next two wins, you know, at home versus New Orleans and, and Sacramento, you all are going to, you know, see what Tarps you want to see. Tarps off on the next episode. So we'll see what happens with that. But that is going to do it for this episode. For Luke Sylvia, this has been Jonathan Osborne. You all have been listening to The Six Man Show. And we will catch you guys next time. See ya. Thanks for listening to The Sixth Man Show. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes and Spotify to get new episodes downloaded directly to your phone. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to give us a five-star rating and a review. It helps out the show a lot. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Six Man Show. We'll catch you guys next time. Go Magic!